Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to give you a brief introduction to Computec Process Force's MRP 2.5. It's quite a big topic, so just a word of warning that this video probably won't cover everything, but I will give you a fairly broad overview. In general, MRP looks at consumption patterns of product, and on the basis of those consumption patterns and some other information that you enter into the system, then MRP can give you recommendations about what you need to order and, of course, generate the subsequent documents. We decided to improve on the MRP currently available in SAP Business One in a number of ways. In phase one, we wanted to be able to run MRP for product revisions and also to be able to take batch status and validity into consideration to consider vendor specific reacquisition periods and also internal lead times. And we wanted to add some user-friendly tools for getting MRP recommendations and then create the appropriate documents based on those recommendations too. So let's get started. MRP 2.5 has its own forecast form. It's almost identical to the SAP Business One forecast form, but it has one big change. In MRP 2.5, you can run forecasts based on revisions, as you can see here. But in general, it does just work the same way and you can create daily, weekly or monthly forecasts and using the create forecast button, you can add lines to the forecast and so on. Before going any further, we also have to define the planning data for MRP 2.5. This is done on the item master data for each item and on the item details form for each revision. So I'm looking at item master data on the planning data tab right now. Many of these fields are also in standard SAP Business One MRP, but I'll just run through them now to give some context. Planning method, procurement method, and component warehouse, these are all fairly obvious. Order interval is for defining the frequency of the order, so here you would define a time interval between any two orders. Order multiple lets you define in multiples of which number MRP recommendations will be made. So if you set it to 10, your recommendations could be 10, 50, 150, 1150, etc. If MRP 2.5 calculated an order recommendation of 95, it would then be rounded up to the next multiple of 10. So the system would suggest placing an order of 100. Lead time is, again, fairly obvious. How much lead time is needed to receive the goods? Tolerance days means that the system will allow the recommendations from MRP to fulfill the requirements at a later date according to what you set up here. Internal lead time is something that we've added. Internal lead time allows MRP 2.5 to consider the additional time we need to process the transaction. So for example, it might be quality checks or whatever. And here, this data is valid for all suppliers. But as you'll see shortly, we also have the possibility to define lead time and internal lead time according to specific suppliers. And we can override these parameters there. So if we have very reliable supplier, we might need to do less quality control checks on goods from them so we can make the internal lead time a bit shorter just for that supplier. Um, this is a topic that I'll come back to a bit later. Uh, moving on, we've got minimum maximum order quantities here. These are also Computec Process Force fields. And in combination with the order multiple field, these can help with your MRP calculations. If, for example, you have some kind of limitations on quantities that you can manufacture or that your customers can order. These fields, they shouldn't be confused with the maximum and minimum quantities fields on the inventory data tab, which are also used for MRP, but refer to inventory levels in the warehouse. And finally, internal lead time scope. Um, this is where we determine how internal lead time is added to documents. You have three options here and what you choose has an impact on whether internal lead time is added to sales documents or if it's added to manufacturing orders and purchase documents or recommendations or all of the above. As I said earlier, you can set up the planning data for each item here on the item master data, but for revisions, you enter the planning data on the item details form, which I'll just open here from the context menu. At this point, it's worthwhile noting that MRP calculations based on revisions will only work for batch managed items. To set up our planning data, we need to go to the planning data tab. And here we can choose the revision that we want to set up planning data for from this list. And the rest is just exactly the same as it is on the item master data. So I won't go through it again right now. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that we can also take vendor specific lead time into consideration. We'll go back to item master data to the purchasing data tab 
to set that up because you have to have a vendor set up as your preferred vendor here like so. And then we have to do a couple of things on that vendor's business partner master data. We have to define a default shipping type. You can enter the internal lead time information here for this vendor. And then on the addresses tab, you also need to have a default address assigned. And we have to have these defaults assigned so that MRP 2.5 will work correctly, but these are not necessarily the rules that the system will use when calculating MRP. To create those rules, we have a plugin, it's called Vendor Lead Time, which I'll show you right now. And the rules that we set up here can be used when we run MRP Wizard to give us recommendations that are as precise as possible. So this is what the plugin looks like. It's really easy to use. Uh, let's just create a few rules as an example. I'm going to choose my vendor here and I can select a shipping type and an address and then enter the lead time for that shipping type and that address. Let's say it's six days. And then I can set up another rule for maybe the same shipping type, but a different address. Maybe it's only four days. And then I can continue on like this and create as many rules as I want. And then later, when we use the MRP wizard, we'll be able to choose which of these rules we want to base our calculations on. And actually, you can also create custom rules from the MRP wizard as well. Well, that's more or less how you set things up to take these new factors into consideration in MRP calculations. So let's now move on to the MRP wizard and see how we can get some MRP recommendations. The MRP wizard can be opened from SAP Business One or from your web browser. The wizard is for creating and running MRP scenarios. And when you open it, you'll get a list of existing MRP scenarios. You can either view all of them or filter them according to their status. You can also use the search box and sort them as well. If you want to create a new scenario that's similar to an existing one, you can duplicate scenarios and then save them under a new name, make some amendments, or obviously we can create a new scenario from scratch, which is what I will do just now to show you the available options. So we start off by giving our scenario a name, a description, and start and end dates of the planning horizon. In the planning horizon tab, we can define the period for which the scenario will be run. You can define if holidays and weekends should be taken into account in the calculations. And also if you want to distinguish between items that we make and items that we buy when it comes to holidays. Also, if you are going to take cumulative and internal lead time into consideration. And then we have some options about what will be displayed in the results when we run the MRP scenario. Moving on to the item selection tab, this is where we define if we want to include all items or only certain items. And by the way, when I say items, you can also run the MRP wizard for co-products and scrap. This is also where we tell the system that we want to base our MRP recommendations on revisions if we want. If you want to work with revisions, you have to select this checkbox. If you do so, the planning data will then come from item details instead of from item master data. Then there's a search and filter function to help you find the items or revisions that you want to include in the system. There is quite a wide range of criteria that you can use and you can just keep on adding items from here until you have a list that you are happy with. When we have our list, we can also filter it or we can remove items from it. We can deactivate certain revisions or items using this checkbox here. We can also say if we want to use order multiples or minimum and maximum order quantities lead time, internal lead time, etc. We want to take these things into consideration. And then we can also change the data for all of those from here if we want to as well. If you remember, we talked not long ago about vendor specific lead time. Well, we can select the vendor we want to use here too. And this is also where we can define which of our vendor lead time rules we want to use. It's possible to customize these rules from here as well. And um, then we have the inventory data tab. This is very similar to standard SAP Business One MRP. You can run MRP for the whole SAP Business One company or for each warehouse. And down here, we will add our warehouses. We can take batch status and batch expiry dates into consideration in our MRP calculations. You can do this for each warehouse individually. 
um, for expiry dates, you just have to check the expiration date checkbox and then define a date range. And the MRP recommendations will only be calculated taking batches with expiry dates within that range into consideration. We can also tell the system to only work with batches with a particular status by using the check boxes here. If we come back to the header, if you're working at the warehouse level, you can also get recommendations for inventory transfer requests. So if one warehouse has a surplus of something and another is running low. If you just check this top checkbox, the system will consider how much physical stock you actually have in your warehouse. But if you also check the next box, the calculations will also include planned stock. So perhaps an example is the best way to explain. Let's say that you have a thousand pieces in warehouse A and warehouse B needs 2000 pieces. If you have the top box checked only, then the system will recommend an inventory transfer for the thousand pieces in warehouse A, plus that you make or buy the other thousand pieces. But let's say that you've got a delivery planned of a thousand pieces to warehouse A for tomorrow. If you have the second checkbox ticked, the system will recommend that you send those pieces to warehouse B instead of you making or buying them. Inventory level, this is just the same as in standard SAP Business One MRP. Recalculate stock by batch expiry date is our final checkbox in the header. By checking it, you tell the system to take approaching expiry dates into consideration as they occur. So if we have some stock that's going to expire in two days, the system will tell us to use it tomorrow if possible, but after that, it will be completely removed from the equation. The document data tab is where you define whether you want to use just the planning horizon or also historical data as your data range and which documents will be your sources for demand and supply information. This basically just works like in a standard SAP Business One MRP, so you can also restrict the calculations to certain documents of each type by selecting the document type here, choosing add documents, and then you can use the filters here if you want to add specific documents to your list. Then in the forecast and recommendation tab, firstly, you can define what kind of recommendations you want to receive when you run the MRP scenario. So if you want recommendations for purchase orders or purchase requests, um, if the recommendation should be for the default warehouse for the item or revision or for the warehouse where the demand is. And also you can define the consumption method here too. Then you can define which forecast or forecasts you want to work with. So that's everything we need to do to create our scenario. I'll just click on the add button and now we can go and run the scenario and get our recommendations. After running the MRP scenario, we'll be able to see the outcomes based on the data that we've entered here so far on three taps, results, consumed forecasts and recommendations. In the results tab, we have a Gantt chart. You can customize exactly what you see on this Gantt chart. We can zoom in and we can zoom out. We can use these arrows or these um, two buttons at the top to expand and collapse items. You can choose to see this column for future recommendations beyond the end of the planning horizon um, and warehouses for which there are no recommendations. You can turn them on or off. Uh, the history column displays demand and supply before the start of the scenario. This will be visible if the historical data checkbox is selected in the document data tab. I'll just explain what we can see in the rows here. So we start off with our items. The first one is FG01. Then when we expand an item, we can see the revisions of that item. So code 00 is a revision. And then when we expand the revision, we see warehouses. 01 is the warehouse here. Then for each warehouse, we have rows for supply, demand and stock. And stock can also be expanded to show allocated stock, which can be displayed if internal lead time is being taken into consideration. Maybe we'll take a look at an example with a bit more data on the Gantt chart. Here we have item BC, revision 00, and warehouse 1. And here we've got a recommendation for a supply of 9,897 units. I'll show you in just a moment that this recommendation is actually for a manufacturing order. 
Then in the next line down, we have demand for this item. In the next line, we can see the stock levels. So we'll have these items in stock until they're used for our demand. And also we can see the period for which the stock is allocated. By clicking on the numbers, we can see the pegging information. If we look here, we have a recommendation for a manufacturing order for 9,897 pieces. And from the pegging information, we can click on this icon and this will bring up a visual representation of the relationships between the source documents, recommendations and outcome documents. It looks like this. The manufacturing order that's our base document is this one here with the tick on it. This manufacturing order is a recommendation and we know this because it's grey. So recommendations are grey and actual documents that already exist in the system, they are coloured. So if we start at the top, we have three sales orders which have created the demand. To fulfil the demand, the system recommends this manufacturing order here for item ABC. It's grey, so it's a recommendation. But for that manufacturing order to be processed, we need to produce this item BC first. So therefore, we have our manufacturing order recommendation, which is our base. We can also see that the system recommends that we use the goods produced in this manufacturing order to process these other green manufacturing orders, which already exist in the system too. Then we'll go to the recommendations tab. Here we have the outcome of running the MRP wizard and we have a list of recommendations that we can work from. We can create purchase orders and manufacturing orders and so on based on these recommendations. And again, if we scroll along to the end, you'll see this little icon again and we can open the visualization of the relationships between the documents and recommendations. And then we also have a list of consumed forecasts here as well, as you can see. So now that we have run the MRP scenario and we have our recommendations, we might want to put those recommendations into action. We also have a tool for that. This is the order recommendation application. And here at the top, we can select the scenario that we want to work with. As you can see, there is other filtering criteria here, such as due date or item code or vendor code. But I'll just choose the scenario that I want and apply the filter and then I'll get a list of documents. You can change the parameters in the editable fields from here. You can see that for this recommendation for now, we have the base quantity and this is what we need. And then the open quantity, which are those that a manufacturing order has still not been created for. The selected quantity is an editable field. So if you want to manufacture some extra units, you can change that number here. To create the documents, you just select the recommendations that you want to create a document for. And of course you can select multiple recommendations if you want. Um, you can make any amendments to the quantities, etc. but I'll probably just leave these for now. But then you select save and create documents and then you'll get a window informing you which documents have been created. Once we've done that, you'll see that the open quantity is now zero and that there is a note in the second column that this document has been created successfully. You can also check the relationships map again from here by clicking on the same icon as before. Um, items that are still recommendations, they're again here in grey. We can see the actual documents in colour and this inventory transfer request here was one of those documents that we created just a moment ago. So those are the main features of MRP 2.5 phase one, but we are not quite finished with MRP 2.5 yet. There will be a phase two, and this will include um, the automation of alternative item availability, uh, MRP taking into account the availability of resources, synchronization of production scheduling with MRP, uh, the analysis of delays in manufacturing orders due to material shortages, uh, forecasted manufacturing order consumption by upcoming sales orders, MRP permissions and workflows, and planning component versions and purchasing raw materials according to cutoff dates. So I'd like to thank you for watching. I hope you found this video informative. As I said at the beginning, this demonstration was really a very quick overview. So if you have any questions about potential usage scenarios, if you need more information about how certain features work or anything else at all, please do get in touch with your Computech partner or indeed with us directly via the usual channels.